Hello guys and welcome back to another video and another video on the BMW today. Now, as many of you guys know, I have a BMW E65 series with the N47 engine. And today we're going to be doing a oil and filter change. Last time it was done was when we had the engine out and when we did the time and chain job, which I believe was around 4,000 miles ago, maybe a little bit more. Uh, but I recommend if you have this engine to change out the oil every five to 6,000 miles if you want it to last. Now, I know BMW recommend every 18,000 miles, but that to me, that's just complete nonsense. That was more of a, a marketing uh, selling point. Uh, you know, basically they said, if you use our long life oil, you'll only have to change your oil every 18,000 miles rather than say every 10,000 miles. If you want these engines or really any engine to last, then you should be replacing it more frequently than not. You know, oil and oil filters, they are very cheap. They are very, um, you know, simple and easy to replace yourself. Um, so really just don't skimp on oil and oil filters. Get yourself some decent oil, get yourself uh, a decent oil filter and uh, then just replace them often. You know, the whole kind of time and chain issue uh, with regard to the N47 was, you know, at fault of the uh, infrequent oil changes. You know, if you are changing your oil every 18,000 miles, then, you know, you're just asking for problems to arise. With that being said, uh, I'll show you the oil and oil filter that we are going to be using today. So this is the oil filter. It is a Bosch oil filter. I tend to always go with Bosch with all, all of my uh, filters. Never had a problem with them. And this is the oil. It's a Manol 5W30 LL04, which is the correct spec and the correct grade. But yeah, without further ado, let's get outside, let's get this car up on ramps, and let's do this oil change. Okay, and so here's how we're looking. We have the car up on the ramps. More than enough space to get underneath now. First thing I'm gonna do is remove the engine cover. So we have access to the oil filter housing. And I just want to point out as well that this engine is warm. It's not cold, by the way. You want to do this with a warm engine, the oil will flow much better. But the next thing I need to do is crack off this um, oil filter cap. It uh, should only be done up to 25 newton meters, so it shouldn't be, um, you know, shouldn't be crazy to get off. And it's good to use one of these oil filter wrench attachments as well on these uh, oil, oil filter housings. So obviously, there's no nut on the top essentially. You'd either have to use one of these or like a massive socket, like a, I don't know, what's that, about 70 millimeter socket, something like that. So we'll, uh, we'll pop this on anyway. Okay then, so now that we have the oil filter cap loose, I've just put a paper towel there just to try and catch any excess oil. And what I'm going to do is lift it and put it into this tub here. Let it drip a little bit and let's go for it. Okay, so next thing we need to do is remove the oil filter itself from the cap. It should just pull out. There we go, that's the old oil filter out. And we need to give this a good clean. And we also need to remove this o-ring on the cap as well. Let's get that off. And we just need to give this a good clean up and then we can put it to one side. Next thing we need to do underneath the car is locate the sump trim panel. Should have three screws in. Mine's missing one so it only has two but these look like, what, eight millimeter screws. So I'll, uh, I'll get them out and then uh, we should have access to the sump plug then. They are 8mm by the way. And that's the other one. It should pull down. And as you can see, we have access to the sump plug now. Which mine actually has a drop of oil on. It doesn't look like it's been 
leaking much I'm guessing that's just old but yeah there's no fresh oil on this so I don't think it's been leaking but we do have a new crush uh, washer to go on there a new copper washer so we can put that on there anyway but yeah next thing we need to do is crack that loose but obviously we've got to get our drain pan underneath because this is all just going to come shooting out okay so we have our drain pan underneath all we need to do is crack loose the sump plug which i believe is a 17 yes it is a 17. there we go and let's see if we can do this without getting oil down around it's coming there we go yeah, it's nice and warm. Okay, so I'm just going to let that drain for a few minutes. But what we can do in the meantime is get the oil filter ready and also the sump plug as well. Okay then, so we have the oil filter cap and the sump plug or oil drain plug, whatever you want to call it. And we need to get these ready now to be reinstalled now with the sump plug or oil drain plug just has a copper washer on so all we need to do is remove that and then give this a good clean then with the oil filter cap obviously we've already removed the o-ring but just give this a good clean and then in the new oil filter box comes the standard with Bosch obviously you have the new oil filter and we have the new o-ring and the new copper washer for the sump plug copper washer just goes on like so and then for the rubber o-ring for the oil filter cap I like to get a bit of oil from our new oil bottle and put that on here just helps it go on a little bit easier and it also stops it from pinching as easy so Let's uh, put it in its slot. There we go then. That is that on in position. And now we can install our new oil filter in. Very, very, very easy to do. All you need to do is push. And that is ready to be reinstalled on the car. And then when it comes to installing the new oil filter into the oil filter housing obviously you just need to make sure this goes into the hole that's just down there so let's drop this in there we go you'll know when it's gone in and this just needs tightening now to 25 newton meters go that's done up to 25 newton meters and now that the sump has pretty much finished draining we can go ahead and reinstall our plug and then this too needs to be tightened down to 25 newton meters There we go. Okay. okay, so I'm pretty sure this engine holds between five and six liters of oil. Uh, we've probably got about, I don't know, two and a half, three liters in here. We'll, uh, we'll dump this in and then we'll see if it registers on the dipstick. I know that it won't but it's all always uh, worth checking and uh, and then we'll obviously you know keep repeating the process put like another litre in check the dipstick put another in and then we'll see where we're at that golden syrup 
we we'll go ahead and just check the dipstick. Yep, as I suspected, bone dry. Right, let's put about another liter in. Check it again. From the right at the bottom of the dipstick. So let's say put another liter in. About midway now. I'm going to fill it up to max and then start the engine up and obviously let the oil circulate. You know there's a whole lot of oil that needs to get to the oil filter housing um, so we will need to add more um, but I'll go ahead and fill it up to the max and that should be enough to start it up. Okay so it's registering at the max on the dipstick. We'll go ahead and see what the iDrive says. Okay, so vehicle information, vehicle status, uh, engine oil level, not possible before ignition on. Engine oil level sufficient, so we'll, uh, we'll go ahead, put the oil cap on and then we'll start the engine. Okay, so it's shown at max on the oil level sensor, but we'll go ahead and check the dipstick again. Okay, so it's like about halfway on the dipstick. And then put a little bit more in. You should never trust the oil level sensor, always go off the dipstick if you have one. a little bit just below the max but bear in mind there is some oil that has to be drained back down into the sump so that slight bit under the max is where we want to be right now it's good enough for me okay then so that is the oil and filter change done on the n47 engine as you saw, you know, very, very easy to do. There's no reason why you should not be doing this as often as possible. Like I recommend, you know, five, every five to 6,000 miles and uh, you should be good. You should get a lot, uh, a lot of miles out of this engine. It should go on for at least 200,000 miles. Um, but yeah, I hope this video has been somewhat helpful. And for those of you that, you know, are kind of used to me doing something a little bit more complex, I do apologize, I'm not trying to make you suck eggs. I know, you know, an oil and filter change is not that, um, not that interesting to someone who's a bit more of an intermediate um, car enthusiast, should we say. Should we say. Um, but yeah, I hope this video has uh, helped a few people out there. But yeah, all right. I want to thank you guys for watching. Give it a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you have already done so, and I'll see you guys in that next video. Peace.